Aloha everyone, hola. So I am giving you a crystal clear update from my journey into 2022. It's been a long cosmic minute here, a few months since I've done my last Community portal transmission, but there has been some massive change and transformation. But that being said, I am super alive and excited to share with you in this moment what is happening right now. So, yeah, I know there is a lot of FUD out there as I talk about. F-U-D-D a lot, fear, uncertainty, doubt, despair. Um, In this moment, there is a lot of beautiful tropical wind blowing from the Pacific Ocean as I am currently in El Salvador, presencing into the decentralized narrative, Conversing with a lot of expats and locals and people behind what is happening here because it is a David and Goliath situation where this country has, at least at the government political level, has adopted Bitcoin as a currency system that is valid for all transactions. I haven't yet talked about my connection with uh, Bitcoin, but I have been involved since 2017, but I suppose in this moment I'm choosing to come out because this country has inspired me to talk more about what is going on in these huge economic equal value desire and the amount of differences of opinion differences of use cases differences of narrative around the decentralized blockchain but it is such a wave and it is creating such a huge subconscious and outright physical 3D battle arguments, differences of points of view around how we exchange goods and services with currency. And so this concept of Bitcoin and all the different cryptocurrencies that make up all coins and the DeFi scene has something that um, has piqued my interest for a little over a year. I am here to be a part of this revolution. Now, of course, Communiversity, I've always talked about omnicentralization, but omnicentralization is about 10 years away for the masses to really even begin to understand. That has been the guidance, that has been the feedback, and I have done everything I can to bring this narrative out without sacrificing my well-being. And now, in the last few months, Um, end of 2021 into 2022 I've chosen to free everything up and I understand that there has been a strong connection with blockchain at least in some cases and some organizations and some strategies and focuses around using blockchain with artificial intelligence and I've been a firm believer that artificial intelligence is on a general whole has the capability of being very malevolent but at the same time I've also talked about how if done correctly there are ways and this should be never done before and yet people are tempting right now I think it's more the few than the many to benevolently bring out AI in ways that can enhance the human being experience Now, of course, everyone has heard of Facebook and Meta and everything that that conjured up a little over a month ago and how the powers of centralized corporations are jumping on board and and many others 
that are involved with art and NFTs, non-fungible tokens, as well as DeFi narratives, DAO organizations, decentralized autonomous organizations. All of this is like a crazy, super new languaging. And I've been learning a lot. Let's just put it that way. I have been attempting to spend as much time without going crazy online to go back to school. It's been a DeFi school for me um, in the last year, actually, a little over a year on my free time. And I have been able to really grok this narrative. And I share this because I've been very resistant um, in some cases previous to 2021 to getting involved again to into this narrative. But now I realize that we have to embrace uh, a lot of aspects of this. And we can do it intelligently, we can do it coherently, we can do it connected. And there is conversations around establishing a, a coherent crypto fund to really support projects and and the community portal is a big connector point we have a, a very strong alliance network and at the same time not sacrifice you know our connection to gaia and regenerative architecture and permaculture and centropic agriculture and what we really need to do which is to come back to the earth and, and revitalize our our deep crystal connection to Pachimama and to living in resilient community. But at the same time, we have to embrace how we are going to exchange goods and services. And ultimately, I believe that this narrative will move to omnicentralization, which will be uh, part of what we have um, thought about in our different heart think tanks has been to move into a state of coherently and congruently bringing every single goods and services that has ever been exchanged, every product, every well-being service, everything that we do in the matrix grid and uh, co-create a direct energetic exchange protocol, which is called DEEP, D-E-E-P for short as an acronym. And what DEEP is, is that we take out all of the middle decentralized narratives eventually and we go into a a value core value point system um, with deep and so everything has a deep value and it can it can be exchanged through uh, an algorithmized most likely a benevolent ai automated uh, platform that allows us to exchange goods and services directly with users from user to user through the platform without having to exchange or go through a third party. And the third party idea is part of the decentralization because we need to move beyond centralized powers. We all understand and understand what's happening with the new world order, the planned demonic, this automated AR, VR world where they can create a system based on social credit and where the government is becomes your family and you will do everything to serve the government and rat out even your brother and sister and your other family members in order to serve the government. That's exactly what's happening in, in China right now. So there are other ways beyond this sort of Orwellian system and I firmly believe that the decentralized narrative is a, is a part to embrace that. So I'm inviting you to embrace this. I'm inviting you to to continue to listen to me on this channel, but things are gonna change in this year of 2022. And I'm gonna be embracing more of a financial narrative and, uh, and moving towards sharing in a gentle way, in a non-invasive way, what I have been really doing a deep dive in. It would be my joy to share some of these things. And so I just wanted to give an update today here in this beautiful Piero Surf here at El Zonte Beach, which is Bitcoin Beach. The first place that has really embraced uh, the Bitcoin um, revolution in El Salvador, where 
some Bitcoin whales have chosen to activate one of the most impoverished towns by the sea here. Uh, very, very super low income and they have chosen to or attempted to establish a headquarters called the Hope House and we got to connect with some of them including the manager Romain. It's changing yeah. and it's here it's now and we're just lucky to leave this big change. Be part of it, yeah. And it's so exciting that like you say the smaller country of America leading this? No one expecting that. Because the problems that El Salvador have, they are not different. They're it's not the same in Guatemala, yeah. Honduras, like lots of other countries. Yeah. yeah. And Bitcoin is inclusive, it's for everyone. Bitcoin is light. Bitcoin is giving access to the people that never had access to financial systems that exist now. Yeah. And Bitcoin is allowing everyone and it's, it's for everyone, you know? Yeah. And understanding that this that for for this part of the world Bitcoin is access to the financial system. But maybe for people from Canada, from the United States, as an asset, but it's also like a monetary network that you can use to transact yeah. and send money. So in our business, we even use it as a way to record intellectual property. Like when we come up with ideas, register it on the blockchain. And this it's is cheaper like, than patenting sometimes, and, and copyright. This, and this is like exactly the point. Bitcoin representing different things for... Different industries, different people. Different yeah. people. But... Bitcoin is the tool that everyone can use it to improve their life, you know, and this is what's happening here. And it's, we're just typing in the beginning of something really big. Yeah. And we're so early, but it's so beautiful to live in this time. Yeah, I agree. And get a lot of information about how they went about it. And I think really it's the value, you know, there's controversy around Bitcoin, there's rumors, there's people against it that are locals there are people for it it's it's um it's a it's, a, it's a lot of dialogue or there's tons of information there's tons of points of view but i think the number one thing is that as someone who's a guest here i've got to witness what it takes to change the money system to change the way we exchange energy for the things that we need in order to you know the foundation for basic survival and so one of the things that really impressed me is that the people of this four to 5,000 person village, you know, 70% of them have never even had a bank account. They are not, they are the unbankable people, as they call them. And so to be able to form their own wallets, to be able to form their own account online and, and be able to hold their own uh, codes to their funds without any bank saying yes you can have a bank account because you you know you have all these things you know i mean everything to establish a bank account right you have a job you have a, you have a consistent pay you're able to have a, an address a lot of these people don't even have addresses they don't even own the places that they live at and so in the last uh three or four months the hope house and the bitcoin beach headquarters has been able to establish i think almost uh 10 houses all paid with their work with Bitcoin um, for these families that have uh, did not know anything about DeFi or Bitcoin or how to do anything and they embraced it they learned it and they are seeing that this is a way that can change their whole entire reality uh, it really is giving me a lot of inspiration because it's shown me what's possible because you know, the problem with Bitcoin in the last 12 years since Satoshi created it is that there really hasn't been a place where it's like you can buy water at the local shop. You can buy, you know, a Coke. You can buy a beer. You know, you can buy something that is tangible, that, 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 that's easy. This is a reality here. And it's still going through growing pains. It's still happening. It's only been three or four months, so it's super new. But at least um, the conversation is happening here. And you can have this conversation with anyone. 
Because the conversation, the decentralized narrative, then all of a sudden goes into conversations about the powers that be and new world governments and forces of organized darkness that are choosing to clamp down. And if the people can be freed to really bank their own money in a sovereign way through Bitcoin as a digital currency, it really is a step for the future of the human race. So definitely watch this space if you're down with me and where I'm going with this inter-evolutionary financial narrative through Communiversity Portal, at least one segment, then absolutely subscribe, like the button, hook up my algorithm so I can keep this content alive, free, and sovereign. I'm sending you guys so much love. And whatever you're going through, just know that we're going through massive, massive change on all levels. It's not going to stop. And the more we can get excited about these new systems and these new exciting features of what's possible when people come together for, for equal value philosophy and unified gender equanimity and this narrative of decentralization and DeFi, we got to get on board. You're invited to the party. So much love and aloha. Have a beautiful day. Check this out.